。本迪哥是澳大利亚维多利亚州中部的一座城镇，距离墨尔本大约一百五十公里车程。十九世纪的本尼哥其实是南半球著名的大金山，吸引了大批华工到这里讨生活。据说这里至今还保留了浓烈的华族文化。镇上的一些白皮肤、金头发的白人也会自称是华人后裔。到底这群鲜为人知的华人背后隐藏着怎么样的故事？澳大利亚作为一个移民国家，华人移民自然不在少数，几乎每座大城市都有唐人街。华人人口在这数十年来更有显著的增长，形成越来越多的华人新社区。但有别于这些新移民，本迪哥住着的却是澳大利亚最古老的华人后裔。一八五一年，两位妇女在本迪哥的溪流中发现了黄金。这个消息很快就传遍了全世界，来自爱尔兰、德国、意大利和中国等地的淘金客蜂拥而至，形成巨大的聚落。在那个通讯不发达的年代，每当有邮件送到城里时，人们就会来到这座山上，升起旗子，通知山脚下的人。这是全球规模的第二波淘金热，直至一九八零年，本迪科的黄金总产量就超过了六百吨，是华人口中名副其实的大金山。为了追逐这个黄金梦，人们不惜离乡背井，一路往南半球寻来。十九世纪中叶，中国广东台山的第一批淘金客也乘风破浪来到了这里。当时中国国内动荡不安，民不聊生。为了生计，这群刻苦耐劳、坚毅不拔的广东人，于是纷纷涌来淘金。不出十年，华人就占据了本地哥人口的百分之二十，并引来了更多不同行业的族人。My grandfather Louis Goon came from Taishan, Guangdong, in the late 1880s. Came out here as a cook, to then moved into being a market gardener. 现年六十二岁的大是本迪哥的第三代混血华人。虽然从他身上看不到华人的痕迹，但他一直致力于维护这座城镇的华人文化，并积极参与华人庆典和活动，是当地华人博物馆——金龙博物馆的现任主席。Hi, Dad. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. 金龙博物馆由当地华人在一九九一年集资创立，这里收藏了许多本地哥华人后裔捐赠的物品，也有一些收藏家的典藏。馆内的老物件反映了早期华人的生活实况，新的收藏则体现了本地哥现今多元的面貌，完整展现了这个城镇的前世今生。而博物馆的镇馆之宝就是展览厅里的帝王龙。Our most recent addition is Dai Gam Long. Da Jin Long is in 2019 just entered the Ben Di Ge, which is the longest Dai Gam Long in the world. Before Dai Gam Long, we have Sun Long, who from 1970 through till 2019, when Dai Gam Long appeared. But the most impressive is the Long Long, who was one of the first Long Long to participate in the opening of the Ben Di Ge. Long. 也是当今世上保存的最好、最古老的帝王龙了。
2001, 100 years later, we took him down to celebrate the centenary of Federation in Melbourne. So he has a very long existence. 帝王龙还是本地哥复活节游行的吉祥物。一八七一年，当地华人为了替本地哥医院和庇护所筹募资金，首次参与了复活节游行。他们从中国运来了雕刻精美的铁轮车和巨型帝王龙，带来了耳目一新的演出。从此，龙狮表演就成为了每届游行的焦点。中华文化就这样融入到了西方节庆里。本地哥复活节游行每年都会吸引超过十万名游客，澳大利亚各地甚至远在香港的华人都会特地来到这里参加盛会。如今，龙狮表演不再局限于华人，而是由这些金发碧眼的白人来延续。The saying is that everybody in Bendigo is Chinese at Easter. <笑>对达来说，在复活节期间和家人一起观赏龙狮表演，是他童年最美好的回忆。They have a traditional ceremony here in Bendigo called the Awakening of the Dragon. So the day before the parade, the Chinese Association bring their lions out, and we used to sit at the front. And watch this and like, you know, wide open, you know, bright-eyed kids watching the lions perform, and then we come down, meet all our family on the bridge over here, and then watch the parade. 如今，身为博物馆主席的他，除了参与复活节游行，平日还可以常常与龙为伍。百余年过去，今天的本地哥已经发展成拥有十四万人口的城市。华人所占的比例虽然已大大不如淘金时代，但市中心的老街却依旧散发着华人气息。当年来淘金的华人大多数都是男性，他们并没有携带家眷，定居下来后，有些人跟欧洲女子结婚，有些人也在当地再婚，繁衍了许多混血二代和三代。这些华人后裔在大环境的驱使下，渐渐的也舍弃了他们的中文名字。Doug 的祖父雷冠就是一个典型的例子。他从广东台山来到本地哥后，娶了一名来自苏格兰的爱尔兰女子为妻，育有了十个孩子。由于那个年代当地政府推行白澳政策，排华情况严重。雷冠一家只能想方设法，在最短的时间内融入当地社会。My grandfather used to sign his name in English, but as Louis Goon, L-O-U-E-Y, G-W-N. So he's part of the Louis clan. But his wife soon anglicised the name on when their first child was born to Lagoon. So it's now L-O-U-G-W-N. Anglicised. Ah, so it was actually from your grandfather's name. Correct. Now I'm getting a different side of Bendigo, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, this is this is rural. Well, 当年雷冠在耕种番茄和包菜方面取得良好的成绩，还通过火车运输到墨尔本去卖。他同时也从事黄金买卖，并在一九一二年买下了农田。至今，这片土地的拥有权仍然归属雷冠的子孙。特地带我来参观祖父农舍的遗址。So here we are. This is the remains of the original hut of my grandfather. So he would have been here in the 1890 approximately, and that's the foundations of his hut. It's amazing that it's still here. Da 和祖父素未谋面，但先被远渡重洋到异乡开拓新生活的勇气和毅力，却一直鼓舞着他。这些年来，他和家人尝试追溯家族的源流，希望找到祖父在中国的故乡。虽然目前斩获的资料有限，但却从没想过要放弃寻根。We all hope to visit there as a family, and I think going back to his roots is a way of paying homage to him as, a, as an ancestor. Wow! Thank you. You know, the moment you walk in here, you can smell it. Yes, exactly. 1892年就开业的台山餐馆是澳大利亚历史最悠久的华人餐馆之一。喜欢中餐的 Doug 是这里的常客。No, no, this is the place for us to come to. I don't go into any other Chinese restaurants. So, what do you always eat here? Well, I love. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I. 
I love my chilli prawn and vegetables. It's, it's one of my favourites, and some, of course, steamed rice. 是不是看到这位老常客哦？他一来你就知道他要点什么。<笑>对，他是有人吃白饭的，通一般的澳洲人呢，他们都吃炒饭的，会吃中餐的人吃白饭。Doug 除了爱吃米饭，每逢农历新年也会与家人和朋友来到这里聚餐。拥抱华人文化的他，希望能将本地哥华人先辈回馈社会的独有习俗，一代一代传承下去。Very important to make sure that future generations, not only of our descendants but of Chinese who come to Bendigo, know of that unique culture in Bendigo, where we work every year to put on the wonderful parades to the Easter festival, and continues our charitable work towards local hospitals as well. 就是因为有像大如此执着的华裔存在，关于华人淘金的故事。参与复活节游行的起源，还有那条巨龙的传说，将继续穿越时代，传送于这座城镇。本地哥气候宜人，风景如画，是个非常适合安养身心的地方。这里的市中心没有一般城市的摩天大楼。有的是大量的历史古迹，丰富了它的文化底蕴。行走期间，王姨的脚步仿佛停留在淘金的时代。Hi there, here's your ticket. Welcome aboard. I'm one of Bendigo's many trolling friends. 作为前英国殖民地，本地哥保留了许多华丽又古典的维多利亚式建筑。形成了一道道美丽的风景线。我现在乘坐的电轨车是本地哥非常有历史价值的文物。电轨车是从一八九零年开始运行，从最初的电池到蒸汽，一路演化到以电力推动。当时是当地人重要的交通工具。搭乘古色古香的老电车，一路欣赏本地哥的市容，一路听着淘金小镇的沧桑历史。如同搭上了时光机，过去的一切仿佛历历在目。其实，电轨车早在一九七二年就终止公共服务，这个具代表性的本地哥标志，当时差点就从市中心销声匿迹。它得以保留至今，有一位当地华人的贡献，功不可没。My grandfather. Lui Du Hoi came to Bendigo to look for gold and to make his success in business in 1860. Lei She Yuan is a Ba Xun old man, also a member of the Bendigo family. In the past, he was a Tao Yi Jia, who was a member of the local university, and was also a member of the Bendigo Foundation of the Bendigo. 负责管理、维护和推广本地哥的文化古迹。镇上的电轨车和这所拥有一百五十年历史的制工堂，就是他旗下的项目。Hello. Hi, I'm Charlene. Hello, Charlene. Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. I'm happy to take you through to see our beautiful temple. 制工堂主要供奉关公。是早期华人矿工的信仰和聚集场所。后来，随着矿工人数减少，庙宇渐渐被人遗忘，因而导致常年失修。一九六六年，雷社员在澳大利亚国家信托的委托下，带领团队进行修复。六年后，制工堂终于重新开放给公众参观膜拜。We're now in the ancestral rooms. The shrine there is dedicated to all the Chinese people that came to Bendigo to look for gold and to start all their businesses. 祠堂原本摆了一排又一排的神主牌，但却在庙宇废置期间被人盗走了。十年前，一块保存完好的神主牌却奇迹般的物归原处。Ten years ago, a lady rang up and said. I want to return the tablet I took when I was a child, and that tablet there 
Song Fu was the very first tablet put in this temple in 1870, and I was so excited. 智公堂是本地哥仅存的古老祠堂宗庙，与当地华人历史文化息息相关。雷社员希望后人可以通过参观宗庙，了解华人先驱的生活习俗与信仰。过去五十多年，他每个周末都会来这里当志工，负责导览和照料院子。关闭疫情期间。智公堂被迫关闭十八个月，让他感到很无奈。如今可以再度回到自己精心守护的地方，他显得格外兴奋。It's just so excited to be back in here. I planted all the trees and all the shrubs. So this is the pomelo tree. I planted that as a little seed. And can you show me the fish? Yeah, oh, my. Oh, your babies, right? A lot of these fish came from my own pond at home. And I'm so delighted to see them. Look. In Bendigo, almost every stone has a Lei family behind it. Lei Shiyuan's father was the founder of the Huaren Festival of Huaren. The Huaren Museum was built on the site of their old shoe store. And Lei Shiyuan, to this day, is still working in the local community. 历史单位、博物馆等当顾问，他平时只要不在家，就在这些历史遗迹里。Well, welcome to the Central Debra Gold Mine. The Central Debra plays a very big part of our local history. Um, one the last mine where we can actually go underground. So here we go, 61 meters underground to level two of the Central Debra. On three, two. One, here we go. Oh, there we go. The Chongyang Daibora Jingkuang, 1939, began its mining in 1935. In 1954, after mining the mine, it faced a famine. 随后成立了本地哥信托基金会，负责监督他的维护和管理。而雷社员就是当时的创始董事之一，协助基金会将金矿打造成旅游景点，让访客可以从中认识本地哥的淘金岁月。其实，雷社员在他孩提时代就和金矿结缘了。当年，他经商的父亲把赚来的钱投资在本迪哥的各大金矿，是中央戴博拉的主要股东之一。What was your fondest memories of gold mines? When I was four years old, my father took me out to one of the richest mines, the North Debra, and as we arrived, all the miners were on our side, and the board of directors invited my father into the boardroom. And they gave me a bag of lollies to keep me quiet because I was a naughty little boy. And during the presentation, they gave my father this huge bit of quartz full of gold. 当年，雷氏家族纵横商界，在本地哥算是有钱有势的大户人家。但即便这样，他们也一样受到白澳政策的迫害。In 1901, they passed what was called. The Immigration Restrictive Act, so that virtually meant Chinese people were forbidden to come here. In 1910, my father married my mother by proxy. She wasn't able to come to Australia to 1920, but she was only allowed to stay here for two years and then had to go back to China. Rosemary, the one of us 当年，雷社员的父亲尽其所能地安排母亲过来。但每次短暂相聚后，又得眼睁睁地送他回中国。1964年，母亲终于获得澳大利亚公民权，可惜不久后就与世长辞。长达七十年的歧视政策，迫使许多华人打道回府，也拆散了许多家庭。然而，雷氏家族却熬了过来，最终在这里扎稳了根。
That's Shailene coming to my house. Here we are, my home. Wow. There's a lot of art pieces in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in a museum? <laughs> so that's my grandfather, Louis Dohoy, and my grandmother. And on the top there, there's the family gathering. So the lady in white is my mother. This was taken in 1919 in Hong Kong. I see something very special right here. This is my grandfather's shop, Akun, in Bridge Street, where the Golden Dragon Museum is. And this was his shop sign in 1876. 一个世纪的沧海桑田, 雷家的老铺子早已去而不返, 雷社员却始终没有忘记自己的根, 日常生活里还保留着主被传下来的习俗, 在书房的一处立了神主牌供奉父母, Danny在1975年的时候回过中国广东，探访了祖父还有父亲所住过的村落。两千年的时候，他也回去了一趟，但对他而言，那里始终是遥远的故乡。而在本迪哥这里，雷家已经繁衍到第五代了。So there we go. All the family photos. <laughs> Three years old. That's so cute. <laughs> Look at how you pose at the age of three. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I know who I am. And that's you now. Yeah. This is it. Christmas, I had the family here, and I cooked shoe yuk, shoe up, cha shoe. That was one of the best meals I cooked. Oh, and this was another family one on Christmas, so every Christmas we get together. <laughs> 雷士园的后代则为了更好的发展，离开本迪哥，到墨尔本和新西兰打拼，唯独他选择留下。Do you have plans to move to the cities that your children are in? No, I am very enthusiastic with Bendigo. That is why I've involved with all the activities of the mine, the trams, the joss house, preservation of buildings. As a matter of fact, when I used to go to conferences all around the world to talk on my specialty ceramics. I would say Bendigo is the capital of Australia, but people say, Canberra? No, no, no. Bendigo is the capital. <laughs> you, you insist, right? In Lei She Yuan's heart, Bendigo is the center of the world. His family is here to live. He is also here to grow up, study, and develop his career. To return to the land of his life, it seems to be the first one. 经历白澳政策的年代自 1945年开始 就有多达140多个国家的数百万人民选择移民来这里 本迪哥设立了第一，也是唯一的一所大学，吸引了海外华人子弟前来就读，就有人在毕业后留了下来。春去秋来，当初陌生的异乡，转眼成了他们颐养天年的家园。我来自马来西亚，是马兰州芙蓉。我七零年来澳大利亚留学，毕业后就在本迪哥市成家立业。现在我成家三代在这里。陈旭桑初到本迪哥时才十九岁，他在这里求学、工作、组建家庭。半个
，请问是陈旭商大哥吗？我是陈旭商，我在这这这种点菜。好,好，你种，我来帮忙，我来帮忙。这以前也是一个菜园，盛的时候有两百多个菜园。中国人是做农的嘛，这种菜是最厉害的。这里的也是黄泥嘛，没肥的。中国人你知道是用月香嘛？对。啊，分水种菜。菜园对面曾经是本地哥最早的华人社区，也就是华人矿工落脚的地方。一八五九年，华人先是在这片土地上设立砖窑，到了一八八零年代，他们开始在这里开辟菜园，种植蔬果。如今，这里已成为非盈利的社区菜园，开放给公众，借此推广在地农业和环保。环绕四周，菜园依旧。华农辛勤劳动的身影却早已不复见。陈大哥初到异乡时，华人留学生并不多。他与几名从马来西亚一起飞到墨尔本的留学生，分道扬镳了之后，就独自一人乘搭火车来到了本地哥，孤身上路。当时第一次出远门的他，心情非常的忐忑。我星期天到下火车的时候，下到大街上。东望西望，南望北望都没有人。<笑>我说这两类可以住得下去啊，是吧？我们在马来西亚小镇也好，小村都是人很多嘛，这里一个人都没有。后来是什么原因让你决定留下来呢？因为我读工程嘛，在我班上只是我一个华人，所以我交的朋友都是洋人吧。我七三年的时候就从悉尼跟朋友车回来，在高速公路上。碰到八条牛，我们好在命大，没有什么伤亡。救伤车载我们去医院，然后两周我出院的时候，这是我同学的好同学的他家长，他们接我回家，照顾我了，养我了。三个月，我就觉得贝尼狗这个城市虽然是小，但是人情很温暖。考取了大学文凭之后，陈旭桑回家乡结婚，随后带着新婚妻子一起回到本地哥生活。欢迎，来我家。请进，给我们夫人。我有一个问题想问你。刚才陈大哥在车上跟我说，他说他当时一看到你哦，是 love at first sight， 一见钟情。所以你也是一见钟情吗 ？No。大哥，没关系，美人还是你抱回了。我是看到他家里有钱千金小姐。移居他乡之后。陈旭桑心中挂念的，除了家人，就是那一道道戒不掉的家乡美食。但他却无法在本地哥找到那熟悉的味道。为了解馋，他曾经开过餐馆。创业容易吗？开餐馆好赚吗？在马来西亚开餐馆，老板就插着头在后面就走走看看。这里什么都要做，厕所什么都要自己来，所以不容易。钱真的没有什么赚，但是我认识很多人，经历的也很多。这些经历是有钱是买不到的。今天要煮什么呢？我煮一个咖喱山羊，然后煮一个三杯鸡，然后清蒸一个芒草。那这些都是以前你的餐馆会卖的吗？以前开餐馆，我不会做菜的，我是走前堂的。以前我是少爷，我来的时候煮一个鸡蛋都不会煮。啊啊！经营餐馆的那段日子，陈家的两个儿子相继出生，夫妻俩忙得不可开交。那时，陈旭商差不多有十五年不曾回马来西亚探亲，反而是他的父母抽空前来探望。烹饪还是他退休后自己慢慢琢磨出来的。开饭喽！哦，我来了，我来了，过来了！太丰盛了，谢谢陈大哥。哎，不用，我就是。当初哦，你们要移民来这里的时候，家人会反对吗？他是来嫁给我吗？当然不会反对了。嫁给你，你要娶我哦。啊，我不来你就疯了。是吧？嗯，那当时家人都没有反对，其实很鼓励你们。没有什么，我不是在这边都我都五六年了嘛，家人也惯了，知道我不回去了。那你你因为没有办法在父母身边，会觉得有遗憾吗？到我这个年龄老的时候就很遗憾。我，尤其是我妈妈，我很亲我妈妈。我在隔壁买了房子，让她过来住，然后我妈妈开个手术就中了这个脑梗，就后来就过世了。所以我们没有见到，然后我请我父亲过来。我母亲你九二年过世，我父亲九四年过来，然后他到了零九年才这里过世。就是过了事情，遗憾也有什么办法
，就是说自己有点愧疚吧。其实你也得到很多，是你们在这边都有幸福的家。三代农场咯，有没有四代农场我不知道。<笑>请进，这间房子呢，很有历史感。我们英文是叫做 Elders Room， 这个是我们历代的中华工会的会长。你看这个，就是 Dennis O'Hoy 的爷爷，然后到他的儿子 Q O'Hoy 是 Dennis 的爸爸。创立于一八七一年，大经商中华工会是本地哥最重要的华人社团，也是当地复活节游行表演的主要单位。负责压轴的舞龙演出，一百五十年来，工会都将游行所募款的款项全数捐作慈善用途。看到当地一代又一代的华人出钱出力回馈社会，激起了程序商内心的那团火，所以他也加入工会，成为核心会员。金龙博物馆的设立，他更是幕后功臣之一。我对我们的文化有兴趣，是从澳洲这边学到。我特别特别敬佩就是这些老前辈，虽然是给人压在最底层，但是他们还有这个心，感恩的心，捐钱募款。我来的时候是 rock and roll， 知道，但是现在我读的是《道德经》《易经》啊。这一天是逢本地哥一年一度的金大节，中华工会的醒狮团也受邀演出。程序商特地带我来见识见识。金大是庆祝本地哥多元文化的节日，通过音乐、文化表演、美食和艺术，带出当地社区的多元特色和活力。到醒狮队哦表演的时候，你根本没有看到华人。然后陈大哥告诉我，他们可能都是混血二代、三代，从小接触了华族文化，长大的时候呢自愿参与醒狮队，因为他们希望可以继续传承这个文化的美。所以我觉得身为华人呢，感到非常自豪，也非常的开心。晴朗的午后，不同种族、不同肤色的本地哥居民齐聚一堂，卖力的呈现自身独特的文化。经过相互融合，这里的人们深刻的体悟到，彼此间的不同并不是障碍，而是这座城市最美好的人文风景。正是这个友好多元的环境，让程序商愿意成为这里的一份子。五十二年一晃而过，他已俨然到地的本地歌人，还担任过当地的文化交流大使，协助推广本地歌的多元文化。一待就待了这五十二年哦。那你对马来西亚还有对本地哥这边的情感是怎么样的？我退休后我就经常回去，我们回去也是吃到完了没什么了。我们家的电路三年前卖了，所以我讲我回家就是在本地哥了。我去到哪里，我讲的家就是澳大利亚。那如果我要你哦，总结这五十年的生活的话，你会怎么说？幸福，很幸福。现在我三代这里同堂，还要什么？是吗？其他东西都不重要，夫人跟我唠叨唠叨，我就出去种菜。<笑>我听你这么说呢，我也帮你做个总结。你就是一个很厉害逃的人，从马来西亚逃到这边，找到了幸福。然后太太唠叨你的时候，你就跑到你的菜园去，你知道，又到幸福的地方去种幸福的菜给家人吃。所以你真棒。<笑>追求更理想的生活是人类的天性。纤细的本能，或许也早就烙印在华人的基因里，而根深蒂固的文化种子，也随着迁移的脚步，传播到世界各地，丰富在地的人文面貌。本迪哥正好就是这么一个兼容并蓄的世外桃源。本迪哥是澳大利亚华人移民的发祥地。十九世纪的淘金热吸引了大批华人涌入，却也引起了白人的不满。一八五五年，当地政府开始限制来澳船只运载华人的数量，并向入境华人索取人头税。
，为了避开重税，华人只好在没实行人头税的南澳港口下船，再跋涉四百多公里来到本地哥。一路上，他们得翻越高山，穿越沼泽和沙漠，很多人最终无法抵达终点。据估计，当时有近两万名华工倒闭途中。百多年来，本迪哥最大的变化就是华人从一个极为不受欢迎的族群，变成当今社会上引以为傲的一份子。而今，只要是和华人有关的记载、文物或者是遗址，不仅成为重要的旅游资源，更是让后人可以凭此线索回溯家族的迁移故事。I'm third generation of the Chan clan. My grandfather Philip Backing. Came from Toy Shan. He was a prominent herbalist. My father was born in Australia, so we are Australian-born Chinese, and my mother she's Irish. So here we are today to meet at a, a very unusual place. It's a cemetery. That's right, at the White Hills Cemetery. 白山公墓是本地哥一个古老的墓地。不少接受过圣公会教堂洗礼的华人先驱都安葬于此，其中一人就是朱莉的曾外祖父雷宪学。雷宪学生前是本地哥华人共济会的活跃分子，一九二六年逝世后，长眠于这片土地下。白山公墓也是朱莉另一个亲人最后的安息地，只不过。他葬在公墓的华人区，这里的华人区埋葬着大约一千名华人矿工。由于当时矿场的工作环境非常恶劣，安葬在这里的华人大多都不超过四十岁。Buried here is grandfather Philip Acking. He came from Toy Shan in the late 1890s. This grave site is both a story of love. And a story of heroism. Julie's grandfather Chen Dexin is not a mine worker. His tomb is the only one with English translation. Also, because of this tomb that is one of the only ones, he saved this whole history. In the past, to fit into the Chinese society, Chen Dexin accepted the Holy Roman Catholic Church and took the name Philip. 不过，他那年幼过世的女儿 Melba 因为未接受洗礼，不能葬在圣公会墓地，只好安葬在华人区。When grandfather he was going to die, he asked that he be buried with Melba because he loved his baby daughter. It would really just would have broken his heart that she would be alone, and he was buried with a footstone, like all of these other. Chinese footstones. My two aunts said they're not going to let this happen. So they went to a stone mason, got a European headstone made, got this changed into a European grave site. They went back to the cemetery people, said, "You come down, and you will see that we have got an English written headstone, and children and grandchildren come here. You cannot bulldoze in this area." Julie 两位姑姑挺身而出，守住了祖父的坟，也捍卫了华人矿工的墓地，让他们可以继续安息于此，平息了一场风波。Well, welcome to my house. You have a lovely hall. Ah, you have some of these Chinese yes. ornaments. I have a lot of Chinese ornaments for luck. On the various door handles, we have different ornaments. Oh, this is interesting. You have a lot of red packets here. Yes. At New Year, we tend to always give people money. Julie 拥有一半华人血统，房子里里外外都可以看到一些附中华色彩的摆设。但其实他上半辈子和华人文化一直都没有太多的交集。二战爆发后，朱莉的父母就从本地哥搬到了墨尔本。
他在那里的白人区长大，对本地歌没有丝毫情感。但四年前，她和丈夫却一起选择这座城市，作为他们退休后定居的地方。You have been living here for a few years, right? How do you find Bendigo? It's a really progressive place. There's lots of interesting people, and I also volunteer at the Golden Dragon Museum and the Bendigo Chinese Association. In 2019, the new dragon Dai Gum Lung arrived here. My husband and I, and many hundreds of others, helped build him at Bendigo Airport. We then had to walk him five kilometres from Bendigo Airport to. The Golden Dragon Museum. 一路上 ，Julie 有幸参与舞龙，还舞了两公里。过去只有男性可以舞帝王龙 ，Julie 是第一批打破传统的女性，让她感到既兴奋又自豪。Living in Bendigo, what changes has it made to your life? It's made me more aware of my history. Of my Chinese history. When I lived in Melbourne and when I lived in New South Wales, I looked different and was different to other people. When I came here, I found out there were lots of people just like me. I got to be reconnected to people that were like me. 来到本地的生活，让朱莉重新认识自己的祖籍文化。突然之间，像是找到了和先辈连接的纽带。她开始整理父亲的遗物。一步步追溯并重组家族历史，从而发现祖父当年职业的店屋就位于金龙博物馆对面。That building still exists today, so whenever I'm in the precinct, I get to see it and I get to tell people who come to visit the museum what it was about, who my grandfather was. I think more people are beginning to find out that there was a lot more. To the Chinese people who came, not just the gold rush, but the ones who stayed, they became part of the community, and the children today, three to six generations down, are still part of Chinese society. They're still trying, they preserve the culture, and we're just very proud. Cut pieces out of them and make paintings. 空闲时，朱莉喜欢在家里种种花草。这个兴趣说起来跟她的祖辈有关。过去，父亲就经常告诉他一些祖父传授给他的草药用法和配方。I have there a lemon tree I use for making my hand sanitizer, but also you can use lemon for wiping, for disinfecting. Where do you learn all these skills to make them? My father worked at the Bendigo Ordnance Factory, and he would finish work, and he would need to clean his hands. And they had commercial products for cleaning hands, but those products are fairly harsh. And my grandfather told my father, "Well, instead of using the soaps that they provide, why don't you start using the lemon?" So I just put together from what I remembered being told. 冠病疫情爆发时，本迪哥也曾经面临搓手液短缺的问题。那段期间。朱莉根据父亲告诉她的方法，以柠檬、芦荟、茶树油等天然材料，在家自制搓手液。她万万没想到，这些祖父传下来的草药知识，竟然会在多年后派上用场。What is your self-identity now? I'm Australian-born Chinese, but predominantly Australian because I was raised by an Australian family for the first eight years of my life. But in the last four to five years. I've become more interested in Chinese and traditions, and found that a lot of the mannerisms that I have is very much Chinese-based. Julie's 最特别的地方就是她是搬到本地哥之后，才重新开启她寻根的机缘，因为在这里她找到了自在。从小，他就被混血儿身份感到困扰，但是来到这里，因为很多人都像他一样是混血儿二代三代，让他很快的就融入了这里的社会，也因为自己找到了华人的根，让他的退休生活有了格外的意义。百多年前，怀抱淘金梦的华人破浪而来。My name is Doug Lagoon. I'm a third-generation descendant of the Louis clan. I'm Dennis So Hoy, and I'm the third generation from my grandfather Louis Du Hoy in Bendigo. 百多年后，寻找安逸的人们
，又循着前人的足迹而来。我是陈其双，我住在澳大利亚已经五十二年了，啊、呃，我现在是澳大利亚公民。我叫陈丽梅，她是我老公。我是陈雨怡，她是我爸爸，她是我妈妈。My name is Julie Rayner. I was born Julie Acking, and I'm a third-generation Chinese from the Chan clan, and I've been here in Bendigo for four years. Here is Australia's heritage, and it will continue.